Guys, welcome back to another update video. We're going to be looking at our newest update to Amped Replay. There's going to be three parts to this. Uh, we're first going to look at a new tracking method and then two new updates which are going to help you use Replay more efficiently. So the new tracking method then is called Keyframe Tracking. This is where we're going to be putting in keyframes throughout our video which will interpolate the position and the size of that spotlight. Okay, so let's start off by having a look at the keyframe tracking then. So we've introduced quite a few different ways of uh, tracking people, spotlighting people, and using the tracking methods with different annotations. So far in replay, we've got the software assisted, and we've got the standard sort of creating a spotlight and just following the person's movement through the frames. But now we're introducing keyframing. Keyframing is going to be really useful because it's going to interpolate the position and the size of the spotlight at each keyframe. So it makes spotlighting really simple. So in this video, we've got a, uh, a burglary going on, a theft in this shop with our guy here coming in, uh, pulling out a, a pistol and demanding some money. So this is what we're going to uh, spotlight with a few keyframes. So the first thing we need to do is go to our annotate tab. And then from there, we're gonna go to our spotlight. And we're just gonna create a spotlight like we would any other way. So I'm just gonna make my circle around him. Uh, I've given it a border, an orange border. And this is going to be my first keyframe. So to set the keyframe, all we need to do is right click and then toggle keyframe. Or you can see here, we can just press the U on the keyboard. Once I've done that, we've got this little icon in the top left of the selection now, letting us know it's a keyframe. Now that we've set that, we can just play the video until it gets to a position where it pauses and then it's going to be a good position to add the next keyframe and you'll see here that I'm also reducing the size of this spotlight and that's going to be interpolated along with the position so now I've put my spotlight where I want it and I'm just going to toggle keyframe again so just to show you how it works before I spotlight the rest of this I'm just going to unselect spotlight and we'll go back, you can see in the bottom here, we've got this orange line now, which is representing that orange uh, spotlight. So if you press play, you'll see now that we've got this spotlight uh, tracking him. In the middle here, it comes off him just a little bit. So it'd be worth adding another keyframe in this position just to keep the spotlight on him. So now I'm just gonna go and select spotlight again. I'm going to adjust the position of that spotlight where it came off him. And I'm going to toggle a new keyframe here. And this will just keep the spotlight where we want it. Okay, so now you can see that the spotlight is staying uh, pretty much fixed on his location. So now we can continue to spotlight the rest of it. So I'm going back to that spotlight. So I need to make sure when I start spotlighting again that I've selected my spotlight before I press play. Otherwise, I'm not going to see uh, the spotlight and be able to move the position. Okay, so now I'm just going to add one more keyframe to this. Hopefully everyone's got the idea now of how it works. And once I've added this next keyframe, then I'm just going to review what we've done so far just to make sure that there's no points in this tracking where that spotlight is falling off our guy. So I'll play the video here and we're just gonna look if it's tracked smoothly. And as we can see, the uh, keyframing's done a really good job at keeping this spotlight fixed on him and also keeping the size relative to him. Guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the introduction to the keyframe spotlighting. The next update that I'd like to briefly mention is with the annotate text. So the text size of the annotate text is now dynamic. So 
when you're applying this annotation, if your video is, for example, full HD, the default text size is going to be larger than if it was a standard definition video. So the default size is going to be uh, different depending on the size of the video. So let's jump into replay and I can show you how this works and how to change the text size if needed. So in this video, for example, we have a resolution of 640 by 360. So this is going to impact the size of our text when we can begin to write on it. So to do the text, we're going to go to annotate tab and then we're going to go to our text icon. And in here now I can create some text. Uh, so maybe I just put something like suspect movements in the top corner. And then if this size isn't big enough, we, you can still manually change it using the size uh, slider here or the size drop down even. So I'm going to go to say size 18 if I want to make it bigger. And then remember we have all these other filter settings. So if you wanted to add a border and add a background, you can. So as you can see from this update, we're trying to make replay as efficient as possible so that you can do any of your work as quick as possible. Okay, so the last update I'm gonna show you guys today is the magnify zoom methods. In the previous versions of replay, we only had one uh, zoom method. And now we've introduced a new method, which is gonna be the bicubic interpolation. So let me jump into replay and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so go, going back to our suspect in our store, say that we want to export a frame of our suspect with a enhanced image of this guy's face. And we're gonna do that by magnifying his, his face. So to do that, we need to go to the annotate tab and then we have the magnify tool. So I'm going to select that and now this new setting that we see is this zoom method. We've got these exact pixels nearest and better quality by cubic. So let me apply my zoom first and then I'm going to speak about both of those types. So here you can see I've created a selection around him. I'm going to move it down to the right and select this blue dot. This is representing what's getting magnified. I'm going to put this on his face. I'm going to add my border type, uh, point to zoomed area, three lines. And I'll change it to orange again. So I've got this set up. So right now the zoom method is set to nearest and this is saying the exact pixels. So as this is getting larger, the pixels are being copied. The values of the pixels that are being created are just being copied from the nearest pixel. So it just creates a accurate representation of what was there previously. It's just making it larger. If I change this now to better quality by cubic, the by cubic is going to interpolate the values of the pixels in between. So it makes it more visually pleasing, but it's not a, um, an accurate one-to-one -one representation of what was there because now the by cubic uh, algorithm is cleaning this magnify up slightly so you get a better quality it's more appealing to the eye but it's not as accurate as the nearest is so these are the two new zoom methods that you can select between now so again here is the nearest and then the bicubic I hope you all enjoyed the update video and I hope you're looking forward to using a lot of these updates in your future projects. Take care guys and I'll see you next time.